Um, notice that a Turing machine is just a computer program like any other. So now one may ask whether all problems that can be written as a computer program can be computed or, or solved by a computer like a Turing machine. Um, have you ever wondered if one can avoid this kind of message, messages on your computer? What about this one, the, the scary blue screen on some versions of Microsoft Windows telling you that the computer just crashed? Um, well, it turns out that they cannot be completely eliminate, eliminated. It turns out that these kind of problems are not solvable or computable. If you want to ask questions about the behavior of Turing machines or computer programs in general, uh, this is going to be the case most of the time. So you cannot really cover all possible cases. And Alan Turing himself showed this precisely um, in order to show that David Hilbert's um, idea to automatize mathematics was actually impossible. So imagine we were able to know when a computer program will never halt or is going to crash or is not going to halt for that matter. Um, like the case in which you get a message from your computer telling uh, that there is a problem running a program. In other words, we could build a Turing machine U that is just another computer program that accepts as input the description of another computer program or Turing machine M. And then U halts and tells you that M does not halt if M halts. Or the other way around, if U um, does not halt, is because M halts. But this actually leads to a contradiction if we replace M with U itself. So basically, U is getting a description of itself. So if U halts, then U does not halt and U does not halt if U halts, which is a contradiction. So it, this means that our assumption, the initial assumption that you can actually know whether you can write another program to know if other program halts or not, was actually wrong. And indeed, it is not possible to know in general whether a Turing machine M will ever halt or not. So this is this somehow justifies why companies cannot really get rid completely of flawless software and these kind of messages. Um, and what we just did has the fancy technical name of the undecidability of the halting problem. And this is a simplified answer to Hilbert's questions related to questions in mathematics because mathematical problems are like computer programs. Uh, but the positive outcome we were talking about at the beginning of the lecture has outstanding consequences and is the following. Before the era of modern computers, one may have thought to require a different machine for different tasks. You needed a typewriter if you wanted to type a novel. You needed a radio device if you wanted to listen to music. You needed a phone if you wanted to reach someone else. But these days, all that and much more is performed by a single machine. Isn't it amazing? I find it amazing. In other words, there is one machine for everything. And that property of machines is what, I, what we actually call Turing universality. So in, in the exercise we did, we did before to prove the undecidability of the halting problem, we encoded the description of a Turing machine M as an input to another Turing machine U. Well, this was not an obvious um, trick. Um, one would need to prove that indeed that that is the case, that one can do such a um, encoding. And by doing so, you can follow the instructions of M to behave like M in order to get to the, to the contradiction that we arrived to in the previous slide. And that is what Alan Turing did. He proved that by writing such a universal Turing machine, that given any Turing machine, one can encode encode it as an input on the tape for the universal Turing machine to emulate that particular Turing machine. And uh, in these days, this is obvious because it is what we do all the time. We reprogram our computers to behave in different ways when we open an application. And this is what Turing understood and gave us. He showed us that 
where there were no fundamental and there are no fundamental differences other than operational ones between programs and data because one can write one in terms of the other. So a program can be just data to another program and data can, can be a, a computer program as well. So how difficult is to build or actually write a universal theory machine? Well, it is actually quite easy. Here's an implementation of one in C++ language written by Alex Stengel for a contest that I organized a few years ago. You can see how small it is. Uh, do not try to understand it uh, because the code is quite obfuscated as the contest purpose was to write the smallest possible Turing machine in every programming language. Um, and this is actually the original um, universal Turing machine written by Turing himself. Um, I find, find amazing to look at the directly a historic moment of um, science and perhaps even um, humanity because we are looking at the original um, and first realization of uh, computer pseudo, pseudo code that can actually perform universal computation. Um, it is a tricky machine because some of these labels are not traditional Turing machine states, but subroutines that Turing defined in his paper. E, for example, stands for erasing. If you want to know more about it, you can go to my blog at this URL below, and it is very interesting. 